This film has been made as part of a public engagement project called Bucket Loads of Health and it's set in the Western Cape province of South Africa. It's about how health-related research can provide a platform for the exchange and co-creation of knowledge between different groups of people who don't normally get the chance to meet. Bucket Loads of Health brought a team of water microbiologists from Stellenbosch University together with people living in two geographically distinct communities where access to water is limited. The community settings are Enkanini, a small informal settlement in the Stellenbosch municipality, and Delft, a large township in the northern suburbs of the city of Cape Town. The film shows how a two-way engagement process was experienced by all three participant groups. I'm from the Department of Microbiology and our main or primary research focuses on rainwater or the treatment of rainwater and then also Tando and um, Tanya look at biological little molecules that we are trying to use to prevent microorganisms from causing contamination. It's difficult for you to be a researcher you think you're doing good, but you don't always know how successful you are. When I got here, I was very apprehensive. I really thought everybody was going to be negative about what we're doing in Inkanini. My name is Simi Swambasha. I am staying in Inkanini. It was a little bit challenging for us as the people of Inkanini to meet the new people that we'd never met before. I was a little bit nervous in the morning. This morning when I started meeting you guys, I said, actually you are a friendly bunch of people and I'm very glad I think I'm, I know she's now a little bit settled. We've held creative workshops with the community members and planning sessions with the scientists, which paved the way for two facilitated knowledge exchange workshops, one with each participating community. The process of knowledge exchange involved the scientific team making personalised hand maps to illustrate their journeys into water microbiology. I'm going to say that this was a challenge for all of us because we don't talk about our feelings a lot. <laughs> As scientists, there's something that you kind of switch off. You do, you don't really think about how you feel. Even making this map, you know, when Jill said, look at your hand, I'm like, my what? <laughs> <laughs> my first thought was I want to go study medicine. And I always used to tell my grandmother that I'm going to be the first doctor in the family. That is my dream, that's my goal. And little did I realize that that was not the doctor I was thinking of <laughs> at that point. My uncle went and up until diploma level, then he said, I'd like you to be at least in the science field. She said, okay, I'll be able to help you out with the education as in paying for the education. So he's one of the people that actually is a role model, even up to today. The second finger was that I always wanted to help people wherever I ended up, so I thought science and water microbiology would be the best way that I could do that. One of my first major projects was in Mbukwini, and there was the first time that I walked into an informal settlement. But also, it was the first time in my life I was aware of the actual inequality in South Africa. And that's when I also knew I was going to work in informal settlements. Whatever my research was going to be, it was going to be about water in informal settlements. They also use slideshows to describe their research approaches and explain what they're trying to discover through experimenting with harvested rainwater. The community members shared their individual and collective experiences of living with water shortages through community maps, body maps and storytelling. By following this layered methods approach, the Enkanini and Delft participants moved from collective discussions about water in their communities to thinking about water-related experiences in a more personal way. The life-sized body maps provided a canvas for these personal experiences to be illustrated through images, symbols and thought bubbles. Through the body mapping process, the community participants identified a particularly memorable experience that they considered as important and wanted to share with others. On a body map, you can bring something out of you, what inside, what is inside of you, you can bring out on that map, and that is very pleased. Tanya, this is excellent. You can use some of this. It brings mosquitoes, brings diseases exactly to us and children. 
so you can use some of that, eh? Instead, this on your posters. There are a number of um, disease-causing microorganisms in this contaminated water, and these organisms result in a number of different types of diseases. And these include things like bacteria and viruses and fungi, and they result in a number of waterborne diseases. Now, I took a look at a lot, a lot of your uh, body maps, and I did notice that there were a lot of people mentioning things about stomach cramps and different types of diseases. And it's because of these bacteria and fungi and viruses that result in these different types of diseases, such as diarrhea or gastroenteritis or even cholera. The knowledge exchange events were highlighted by a visit to Wasal Khan's laboratory and a tour of the microbiology department. When there's something growing, you'll see like the small dots that represent the different gems. And then I'll add different drops of the biosurfactant chemical and see if it will allow that gem to grow or not. And then tighten and tighten and tighten it. And then this doesn't only use high temperature to kill the germs, but also high pressure. So it's like a big pressure cocoa over here. So if you were then, if it's um, on and it builds up pressure and you were to open this, it would go everywhere. Can you feel how hot it is? That's your body temperature. You are inside the water system. When you go to the bathroom and take your temperature, that's how they know you've got a fever your temperature is above the system. Yeah. Eight all the way to minus twenty, so you're just going to keep walking. So this is our minus twenty, where we store the organisms and we stop their growth. Everybody wanted to come out, and I was right in front, and they had to keep in, and everybody started shouting because they're getting cold. That was my fun part of it. The researchers, they, they did a good job for us to take us there to the lab to see those things. As the time goes, I feel free. It was really good. It was really, I really enjoyed myself too. The visit to the laboratory, that was the first time that I was in a laboratory that do the research on anything for that matter. Not to mention that it was water and germs and things like that. What stands out for me is things that happen behind the scenes. The Enganini and Delft participants conveyed their perspectives on community-based research through drama and focus group discussions with scientists. During these discussions, the Enganini participants conveyed their general experiences of the many research projects done in their community over the past few years. What is going to happen, I'll be doing this research two times a week. I'll come two times a week in the community to do a collection of the data so that we can run some tests on the water. Oh. Okay. okay, we can do that. So I want to know, are you going to pay us? Because there's nothing for Mahan. Yeah, there is a budget actually for that, uh -huh. uh, but it's not much. And the one thing we want. What is it now? We want to go to school where we can. Yes. No, yes, guys, yes. guys, this is not about going to school. Uh, actually, that is not, it's not part of what I'm doing. What exactly was going on here is what is used to happen in Ghana, where the, the, the researchers used to go there. And I, Yondela, and Anati, he is not here. We used to be called researchers, and we used to work with the researchers who come outside. So when, when we go around in Enkanini, the people used to, to shout at us and say, these people are the ones who eat Mali and don't tell us what is really going on in our community. They're just using us to get money, and we don't get nothing in return. And Sapna sat by a court and was a boss of any information up whom in Layo, Kalabama, Pindabu, Baban, Nabate. I think for me, what stood out is the money question because for us, we're really not always in a position to give anything or promise anything. We're there to do a job, and the funds are not always there. We don't get paid to do a project, so for us, it's a very difficult situation. Like, we said now we want to help, but we don't always have that capacity to help. It's a good thing to express your feeling. I've learned so much to share my ideas with different people. So now I can educate many people in Nganini about the dangers and the hazards of bacteria. 
For a change from my past experiences, it got to the meaning of engagement. It wasn't a one-sided, we educate you type of thing. As much as they brought knowledge that we didn't know, there was room for us to actually tell them what we know. We're not in this alone, but we got partners in it that was also looking from a different point of view. I want this program must go deeper into the communities and to make them aware of how to use water and not to waste water. It was nice, it was educational, it was fun. The most important thing that I learned today was how to reuse the water and the different sorts of grey water that you can use for different purposes. I was always under the impression that the biggest struggle would be um, water provision, um, access to water. But looking at the body maps, uh, the discussions and everything else today, it became apparent to me that it's more an issue with the, the grey and black water and the, the, the health risks associated with that. I think last week and this week has kind of affirmed in my head again that what we're doing is important. And you don't always acknowledge that because you want to publish papers, you want to graduate students. This is, this is what drives you as a scientist. But sometimes you forget how important you, you know what you're doing is sometimes to other people. And I think that for me was very important to the last two weeks. So thank you. That overall, this is a great starting off point for the different groups involved in this research to start to understand the perspectives that they're each coming from. And I saw some really amazing moments of mutual understanding from people. What we're doing can be good, but sometimes we need to be doing other things, especially with the gray water, especially with the black water. And already I was sitting in the wall thinking about how we could help them think about other strategies, just digging gutters in front of their houses, doing simple things, just how to make their lives a little bit easier. What we could do with them to try and improve their living conditions. And I think for me that was the takeaway message today.